Honestly, I feel like the AI coding game has just been flipped on its head the last probably month. We've had Augment Code come in with massive price changes. I predicted some of this way back, you know, maybe 10 months ago, that a lot of these companies most likely were losing money based on their current pricing plans. And it's become true over and over and over again to the fact where there's very few actually left with fixed base pricing. Even Warp.dev just today announced that they are changing their pricing plan. They are going to have a basic $20 a month build plan, and then it's bring your own key. The reason for this is these companies do not own the inference. They do not own the infrastructure. And that has kind of changed with the release of Cursor. And surprisingly, Windsurf, who at one point had kind of written off after the whole open AI came in, wanted to acquire them, that fell through, and then the Cognition team came in and bought them, but they're still cooking. So the Cognition team released a SWE 1.5, a 950 token per second model that is actually pretty solid. My bet is it's maybe based on like a GLM architecture or a Quinn 3 coder, although I couldn't find a base model for Quinn 3 coder, so I'm not really sure. So maybe it's Quinn 3 base. Regardless of that, it's running on Cerebrus from what I could tell, and it's running incredibly fast. Right now it's a promo model, so you can use it completely for free, which I would recommend doing because it is a fairly solid model. We also got Cursor 2.0, which came with the Composer 1 model. And I finally got my prediction right. I had for the longest time been saying Cheetah is most likely a Cursor model. And that is the case. Now, I would love to know what magic they're using for Composer 1, which is what they're calling the upgraded version of what I believe was a Cheetah model. Uh, Composer 1 is supposedly better than Cheetah. What we have here is a 250 token per second model. Uh, my man, Rezal which I hope I pronounced your name correctly, he posted this on X, and it just kind of puts things into perspective. My general sentiment is the game has changed, and it's changed to where fixed monthly pricing only is going to work if you own the model and the infrastructure. And if you think about this historically, Cursor has been so like beholden to Anthropic and OpenAI. And do you remember when the whole OpenAI purchase of Windsurf was going on, they like they were cut off from Anthropic models. It was a huge deal. So Cursor's like threat is that they become enemies with Anthropic and OpenAI. And I kind of wonder what Anthropic and OpenAI think about Cursor launching their own model. Specifically because what we don't know is how the data is coming in for training it. Because is Cursor got some sort of contract with Anthropic and OpenAI to see what their models are sending back? Or are they able to kind of understand like what is good output, what is good input, et cetera? Somehow they're training this model themselves. That's at least my assumption on it, that they're actually building it. And I think for the majority of people, the companies that have their own models and their own infrastructure to actually host these models that can do their own inference are ultimately going to be the ones to win. But only if the models are good. Do they need to be like the best models of all like of all time? I don't think so. I don't think so for about 75% of the people. I'm totally pulling this number out of a hat right now. But based on the hundreds of engineers that I know that I'm connected to, you know, I talk to probably a dozens of them on a regular basis, and a good percentage of those people they don't care what model they're using. They're just using like cursor auto a lot of times. And I've actually had to tell them, you should try this model. A lot of people don't think about it from that perspective. So what I'm thinking is if Composer is good enough and SWE 1.5 is good enough, what we're going to start seeing is things like warp, amped, you know, any of these that are pay per cost, those are the ones that are going to continue on. But I really, I, I dislike the rug pull that these companies are doing, but I understand it. You know, Augment hurt bad for me because I was such a big fan of Augment, and I really thought they could get their pricing model lined up. But Warp.dev, I think the only saving grace for them is the bring your own key model. Because you're now able to bring in, you know, whatever, whatever API key you want, and you can pay for usage. And there is just a small monthly fee of $20 a month on top of that. Now let's take a look on is Composer 1 and SWE 1.5 actually a good model? The first thing that I would call out is they are incredibly, incredibly fast. And I want to show you an example. This is a text-based adventure game. 
I timed this from beginning to end with uh, this prompt, so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. It ended up coming out at 55 seconds. Now, there's really this massive device of camp in the programming world. There's people on like YouTube that really swear by the fact that AI coding is bad. There are others like myself that I don't overhype it or I try not to, but I use it as a tool because I've built so much of this stuff over my career for 20 some years now. I don't want to have to keep doing the same things over and over again. I love digging into like big complex problems and then having the AI go execute that for me. And speed matters a lot. For example, this particular thing that ran over 55 seconds ended up looking really, really good. Now, if you think about this from there's, again, would I take this to production like it is? No, but there, when you're working in a big company, we do this all the time. There's so many times that you're ideating on things or you want to give like a flow to a customer to go through, or you want to actually give something to your designer to go through or jump on an actual like Zoom call and go through it together with the speed that these models operate at. You can do that like in real time. And they're, they're really solid models. In fact, I would go as far as to say, I've been coding with the Composer 1 model more than the Suite 1.5 model because I do think it's slightly better. I know that's just subjective, right? And I would love to know everybody else's opinion on that. But the Suite 1.5 model, I think is, is totally good as well. So a few other things that I've built here. Remember, 55 seconds, and this is totally functional. I just got killed, um, actually, here. Wait a minute, so commands attack. Oh, I can, uh, let me also attack here. I took some damage, hit the wolf. But it's got, like, this entire thing. Anyway, so this is one of my Calendly clone. Now, this one actually is fairly complicated because it actually did set up a server for me. I ran it, one-shotted. This was done with Composer. Still likes purple, which makes me think, you know, Maybe it is a fine-tuned version of one of the Chinese models, but personally, I don't really care because I think those models are great too. I know there's a lot of negative sentiment on it, but if you're able to take a, a base model and make it better for your harness, I think that's great. And this works great. So I've gone through, I've added different event types. I can actually share a link and uh, open it up here and we can actually look at different events that we would have available and I can actually schedule meetings. It all works good. This was phenomenal and it was it's just is so quick to do. It kind of blows my mind. Now, this is the one with Sweet one 1.5, which also I really like the way it looks, but much simpler. No ability to share or book or things like that. They just have this invitee and host view. So a little bit less knowledge and what it was trying to do here. This one, this is Composer. Again, it, it did a Python backend, brought in the libraries it needed to do. And somehow it knew about a library of already trained data so that when I write a digit here, it already is going to pre-recognize it. So I did no training on this one. I can. I did practice doing this, but resetting it, look at this. It actually give, even gives me the probability of this. This one is incredible. Again, the purple. It really loves purple. Now, the SWE model, on the other hand, um, I did a bunch of training. This one did not preload data, which is fine. I didn't tell it to do that. I just thought that was very interesting that it knew it, it figured out to actually go and like have a starting period that we can then over like add different things on top of. But the problem here is like no matter what I do here, I can never get it to um, to actually do any recognition. So I'm going to submit that. You can see here that it, it seems to be learning pretty good. So after a while, it seems to get pretty accurate. But I can never get this part to work. It's probably something simple. It did not do it as a server which makes me very uh, it makes me very skeptical like the robustness of this. I didn't have time to like go into the code that much to to dig into it. Now on the personal finance side, this one was done with Cursor Composer. You can kind of see that in the URL here. I think this looks absolutely great. Um, you can set various budgets. You can see I set a food budget here. You can set saving uh, save goals. You can do reports and then different investments. But I actually kind of like the Sweet 1.5 one a little bit better. Just it, it more hits with like the way I like to see all my stuff together, but most of it's not functional. Same prompt, not totally functional. I can't even delete stuff. So you see, I added this uh, expense here for transportation. I can't edit or delete. This one static in uh, Composer, this one static in um, Sweet so 1.5. This is that text-based adventure game that we ended up uh, kind of talking about here. I'm just see if I can go ahead and defeat it. So I did, I, just, I love this. and. To be able to do something like this so quickly 
just blows my mind. It kind of gives me chills at like how good this is at the speed that it's actually at. Uh, combined with what I think is some of the biggest improvements to AI coding in a while with Cursor 2.0, which I'll cover here at the end. Now, this is the SWE 1.5 one, also one-shotted. And I can say, go south. And I can type help to get all the different commands that I want. You can see, it, my personal opinion, is it just feels like the SWE one is a little bit weaker, but it is still good. These models are not slouches. They are good models. But you will hear mixed impressions on them. I uh, spent a decent amount of time actually using it in, in my actual code base, uh, comparing it against Sonic 1.5, doing some plans and cursor on it, having it imp implement some things for me. And I found it to be quite solid, to be honest. It, it didn't blow me away. It wasn't like, um, I would say, Sonic 4.5 level, uh, but it's close. And the speed of it makes a huge factor. One thing to note is there is only 200k context with the Composer 1, and it does get hit very quick because you're churning tokens so quickly. Your chats like explode way faster than I anticipated here. Um, so I found myself like, I found cursor auto compressing or compacting quite often, which I have mixed feelings about compaction because typically I feel like as soon as you do that, you're going to get some uh, degrading results on it. But regardless of that, Composer 1 actually worked in plan mode, which Cheetah did not previously. And I think it did a solid job and it was really fast. And I actually, out of these two, I preferred the Composer 1 uh, plan for the same tasks that I gave it. And, but the, I think the Sonnet 4.5 would have done fine here. And this is just one example. Now, you may also have noticed that the view of a cursor has changed a lot. And I'm going to pull this down a little bit here. Oh, man, the blue kind of blends in. We have agents and editor toggle here, which I really like that they have this new kind of like experience you can go in. And it I don't know if you're familiar with work trees, but you can use work trees within cursor automatically now by simply saying if I could if I do new agent here and I say I want to use multiple models and I can pick four different models. I can pick five different models, six different models, seven different models. And just let it rip. Now, I'm paying for it, just to be totally honest. It's going to be expensive. But there are a lot of times that I really do want to see what different models do, or even the same model. So I think this is such a powerful thing because it also manages your work trees for you. Yeah, use this sparingly because you're going to be paying a lot of money if you run this too much. But honestly, I don't see a reason why you wouldn't want to run a couple versions of something complex now and just see what it does in the various work trees that happen. I have to pull up the pull game. Now this one was done with Composer. Very similar to the Chinese models. Very similar pattern here. Hard to say if this is just training data or what it is. But regardless of that, uh, if I hold down the space button, you can see the power meter go, I can stop it. And let me try to hit it like here. But amazing physics, like really good. And balls go in the pocket correctly. You do not have any idea what is striped and what are solids. That's one unfortunate thing. But I think it's a really good implementation. Now, I'm going to pull up the SWE 1.5. Also, I would say a solid implementation. I'm going to point out a couple things. One, we know which ones are striped. Two, there's a bug where turns are switching nonstop here. Player 1, Player 2. It's probably hard to see in the video. But if you pay attention to that, it's like flickering back and forth. Secondarily, if I hold down the space button, that's how you actually get the pointer. And you can see the power meter down here at the bottom. And then the physics are interesting. Um, I feel like there's like, there's so more solid, you know what I mean? Like you hit, they, they, there's not a lot more like spread when you hit the pile, but you can get a little bit more power on it. But the one thing that I would point out here is that all of these perform better than like the Gemini models, for example. At least the last time I tested it, where the Gemini models and the Claude models, the physics actually kind of suck. They actually would like uh, the balls kind of stick together and kind of wiggle together, especially if you're hitting more than one ball at the same time. So both of these are solid. And I actually did use SWE 1.5 a little bit in my actual code base. And I found it to be, again, okay. But I there is just something about Cursor that has really got me hooked. And I think it's all about... Uh, the Cursor 2.0 kind of experience. I really like how chat has kind of become the main interface here. I love that you can still get to code very easily. 
I love that you can kind of run stuff, you know, multiple time things in parallel on your own computer. I think that is a huge thing. I've mentioned this to other AI coding agents too, to be able to actually have multiple running at the same time. But the complexity of that seems like it's something that a lot of them don't want to tackle. That's why I really have been a fan of CLIs because I can just open different CLIs and have it do stuff on particular work trees or in the same uh, repository. I just, I really do like what Cursor's doing. Now, I've been critical of them in the past, and I will continue to be critical of them uh, when, when it's necessitating it, but I think they've really unlocked something here. And, you know, there was a prediction on X a while back where someone says that Cursor's going to be irrelevant in two years. I think the likelihood of that happening is near zero now, especially now that they're, even if they are fine-tuning a Chinese model, it doesn't matter they own the model now. They're no longer fully and only dependent to Anthropic and OpenAI. Will that be, will that mean that they would lose some customers if Anthropic cuts them off? Probably. But they, they are still a company that kind of holds more of their own destiny in their hands rather than being dependent on these two. But the Anthropic models and OpenAI models still are superior, at least in my early testing, but the margin is thin. And it's probably going to highly depend on the type of code you're doing. If you're doing front-end, Composer's going to be great for you. If you're doing like an Express Node.js backend or Python, Composer's going to be great for you. You know, I haven't had enough time to test it in like C Sharp or C++ or Rust or Go or any of those languages yet. It might not be good at those. So you're, you're really going to have to kind of like determine if it's sufficient for your particular code base. And the one other thing I would just call out here is SWE 1.5, it doesn't have image, uh, it doesn't take images. Anyway, I would love to know all of your thoughts on these two models. To me, I think this just, it, it really does change my perspective on Cursor and Windsurf to some degree, now that they're, they, they seem to be hammering in on having their own models. I know a lot of people have mixed feelings about the Chinese models. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on that. Do you really care? Companies might care, maybe, uh, because there might be some companies that would say, I will never run or use a Chinese model regardless of where it's hosted. I actually know some people in, in SecOps that would tell me that today. But on the other hand, they've kind of rebranded it as their own thing. So, you know, is it actually going to even be known what the base model is, or does it just become Cursor's Composer 1 or 3.1.5? I would love to know everything that you guys have learned about these models. Do you like them? Is the speed good? What do you think of the cost? Because I do, the one thing to call out really quick is Composer right now does cost a decent amount of money. It is nearing the cost of like GPT-5, but the speed of it more than makes up for that, in my personal opinion, at least if it's good and competent what you're trying to do. Anyway, I've been incredibly busy on my end, heads down coding, but there's been a lot of stuff going on in my day life for my day job with my business and everything. So I'll have some updates on that here shortly. Anyway, I appreciate all of you guys. Until next time, peace out.